things of God. Here it is. I commend my soul to bless the Lord. I commend my soul to bless the Lord. Help me say it. so much for joining us on on tonight i pray that you've had a wonderful week thus far i pray that the blessings of god have rained upon you and your family and i want you to know without a shadow of a doubt that we are so grateful that you have chosen to come and spend a little time with us on tonight i pray that our praise and worship blessed you as well but on tonight there's something that i think a whole lot of us uh needs to be challenged on including myself because as I read this text, I was given fresh meaning to what the Lord is trying to say to us through this particular text. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. Very familiar passage of scripture. Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. Um, and while you're turning there, I just want to also give a shout out to our women's ministry. You had a wonderful uh, woman's prayer breakfast on this past Saturday. It was fantastic. The speaking was fantastic. The praise and worship was fantastic. Spoken word was fantastic. And I also want to say kudos to the men of God and the men of hope who stepped in and served our, our, our women so faithfully and, and, and with excellence. Uh, had a wonderful breakfast that I've heard nothing but wonderful things about it. And uh, I enjoyed being here. And uh, I don't know about you ladies, but it was a wonderful and blessed event. Amen. Amen. I want to say thank you to our women's ministry uh, co-leaders, uh, Sister Diane Jones and uh, Sister Tiffany Edwards. Thank you so much for all that you've done and for all of those that volunteered, whether you decorated uh, or whether you, uh, uh, you helped with registration, whatever you did, I want you to know we are so appreciative for everything. So thank God for you, and I pray that you were blessed just like I was. Amen. Well, family, Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, it reads, For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Wow. Let me read that to you one more time. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees 
and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. And just for a few moments, I, mean, I want to utilize that as a topic of our discussion. Righteousness. What does yours look like? Will you bow with me? Father, we thank you again for a blessed opportunity to come before you. And as always, we do thank you for your faithfulness and forgiving us of our sin. I pray now, Father, that you would have your way on tonight. Move in the hearts of your people. I pray, Father, that your word speaks to them the same way you're speaking to me. I pray that it's clear. I pray that it's powerful. I pray that it impacts their lives in such a way, Father, that as they see the truth of your word, Father, that we choose to begin to become more like you. So, Father, move now in the name of Jesus. Be with those that are having challenges, whether it be health challenges, bereavement challenges, financial challenges, family challenges, whatever the circumstances may be. I pray, Father, that you would soothe those issues in their lives. Give them the understanding, Father, that when you said that you would never leave us nor forsake us, you meant that. So, Father, even when we feel alone, even when we're in despair, you are there. So, Father, thank you now in the name of Jesus. Now, move me out of the way. You teach, Father, but most of all, you save. We thank you. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Righteousness. What does yours look like? Well, family, if there's one thing that you can say about Jesus, he has a way with words. <laughs> yes, he does. In his teaching, and in this particular teaching on the Sermon on the Mount, he makes a statement that can only be seen to some as shocking and to others confusing. Think about it. When you consider who he's talking about, See, in those days, Pharisees and the teachers of the law were the people that you looked up to. Kind of like the pastors and the preachers and the deacons and the Sunday school teachers, the missionaries are today. We look up to them. They were the ones that people were supposed to follow. And in one sentence, Jesus says, whatever, they do, whatever they're doing, you must do better. It's like telling the, uh, of, of the folks that, 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 that are in the uh, our Catholic denomination that you must be better than the Pope in order to make it to heaven. Think about it. That's strong words for individuals on this side of heaven. That's strong words for individuals that are, that are living in this life that I'm supposed to be better than the preacher, pastor. I'm supposed to be better than the one who, who preaches the word, the one who brings forth and ushers in the spirit of God. I'm supposed to be better than them. And look at my life. Look at what I'm doing. How can I be better than them? Well, you know, as I looked at this particular statement, the question came to mind, what was, what, what, what was of such importance in this particular statement, who, what was he really trying to convey to you and I? Well, see, family, to grasp this, you need to understand the nature of the Pharisees and, and the teachers of the law. See, see, this was not the only time that Jesus ever mentioned their righteousness or the way they live. He had a lot more to say, and he said it. Here is, but, but, in, but here is one instance which relates well to what he said in this verse. Watch this. Matthew chapter 23, uh, verses 25 and 26. It says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee. First, clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will also be clean. Hmm. See, in this verse, family, Jesus identifies the problem with the righteousness of the Pharisees and the righteousness of the teachers of the law. See, their righteousness, their, what, what they were portraying was only outward. What you saw is not always who they were. 
And let me just pause there for a moment because just because a preacher pastor stands behind the pulpit, just because a Sunday school teacher stands behind the podium, just because a deacon sits on that front row and prays and, 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 and listen, that, that does not mean that they don't have issues. That does not mean that they are not human. That does not mean that they don't sin. So just watch yourself before you start thinking that they are the one, they are the ones that we are supposed to be. Uh, 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 desiring to be like because my Bible tells me that my only desire should be to be more like Christ. See, they, they, these Pharisees and these teachers, they, they did a good job of making the outside look good because they looked the part. Kind of like preacher pastors now, we walk around looking good in our in our two, three, four hundred, five hundred dollar suits, wearing our two, three hundred dollar pair of shoes, riding in a in, in, in a in a six figure car. But guess what? We're dirty on the inside. See, the problem was on the inside for these Pharisees and and and, and, and these teachers is that although they look good on the outside. The inside, they missed, they missed the part. See, in effect here, family, what Jesus was saying is that this type of righteousness is not the righteousness at all. Therefore, don't practice it. And let me just help somebody tonight because you need to realize, family, listen, I don't care how well a, pre a preacher pastor can say it. I don't care how, how well they can move you emotionally if their lives does not line up. Now, am I saying that they're not called? No, sir, no, ma'am. Am I saying that they're not saved? No, sir, no, ma'am. What I'm trying to tell you is that you need to move yourself from trying to follow man, woman. You need to move yourself in trying to be more like him and try to be more like him. So here's the question. What is righteousness? Well, see, but before we go any further and, and, and get to a personal application, let's define the type of righteousness that I believe Jesus was referring to here. See, there are two ways to look at this verse. In one context, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law are attempting to gain righteousness through their own efforts. You see, if, and, and, and if you believe that, that that's the way to righteousness, Jesus says it's not. See, there's nothing that you can do. There's nothing that you can say. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. Salvation is free. It was paid for on the cross. So there's nothing that you could do. In another context, the righteousness Jesus was talking about emphasizes what you say in comparison to what you do. This is where I want to focus our attention tonight. Look at what Jesus says in the previous verse. Uh, Matthew chapter 5 verses 19. It says, therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Oh, what are you saying, preacher? What are you saying, pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked because see, watch this. Listen, I might, I might have an issue with lying, but guess what? Because I have an issue with lying don't mean that I can exclude lying from my preaching. I might have an issue with promiscuity, but just because I have an issue with promiscuity does not mean that I can exclude it from my preaching. Just because I have issues does not give me the authority, hello somebody, to exclude it from my teaching. In other words, if I'm ever going to be who God wants me to be, I got to keep studying his word. I got to keep reading his word. I got to it, it, I got to allow that word to get into my life, into my heart, so that I can be better try to live it instead of just preaching it. See, we all got issues. And just because we teach the word, just because we preach the word doesn't say, doesn't mean that we don't have issues, but we have to stay on the course. Because my prayer is, is that although I might have issues, guess what? I pray that his word will eventually get to a point to where I'm changed and, and I become more of a doer than just a hearer. Hello, somebody. 
See, see, the problem with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, see, the problem that they had is they weren't practicing what they were teaching, which is like most of us, so don't act like I'm by myself. See, their righteousness was only superficial. Now, watch this, because I need for everybody to understand this. I don't care what your weakness is. I don't care what your sin is. I'm not putting you down. All this text is trying to make you understand this is that you need to stop focusing on the preacher because when the preacher falls, you fall even harder. You need to stop focusing on man. You need to stop focusing on woman. And you need to focus on the one who has not fallen. You need to focus on the one who has not sinned. You need to focus on the one who, who is upholding his word and has never broken a promise. You need to focus. Focus on Jesus. So back to the question. What does your righteousness look like? Consider what would happen if, if we were to pull back the curtain of your life. <sighs> Consider what would happen if the light suddenly shone in your life. What would it reveal? Would there be a clean outside, but the but the heart, but a heart that's not? I hope that it's not the case. But if we were all to be honest about it, sin, sin on the fact that the Bible has already explicitly said, "For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God." We all got some issues there. We all got some stuff. We all got some skeletons. Guess what? I don't care if you're trying to live your life right now, lined up with the Word of God. You got skeletons that nobody know. You're gonna take to the grave with you. There are some things just because you've got it right don't mean that you always had it right. To be clear, family, we ultimately we are justified and we're made righteous through Christ. However, in this particular context in our lesson tonight, Jesus is also talking about your words and your actions. See, is your outside truly a reflection of what's on the inside or is it just for appearance sake? In other words, are you a poser? Or are you like all like 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 most Christians, we're trying to do better. We're trying to get it right. We're striving for for, for perfection. Are you the are you which which side are you falling falling on? Are you just trying to fool folk? Are you a wolf in sheep's clothing? You see, family, Jesus was trying to help his disciples here see that the part of you that no one sees is more important than the part of you that everyone sees because the part that no one sees is who you are. <sighs> yeah. That's a hard pill to swallow, ain't it? See, as a believer in Christ, my desire is not to hinder you, but I still got issues on the inside that I'm wrestling with. What issues are you wrestling with now that nobody knows you're wrestling with? So family, as we search our hearts today, it's safe to say that we all have areas where what we say and what we do don't always line up. Are you with me? And ultimately, this is why we must depend on the righteousness of Jesus and not our own. You see, family, there are two sorts of hypocrites. And I'm closing. This is a quote from Jonathan Edwards. It says there are two sorts of hypocrites, one that are, ones that are deceived with their outward morality and external religion, and the others are those that are deceived with false discoveries and elevation, which often cry down works and men's own righteousness. In other words, family,
when you think about the ones that are deceived with their outward morality and external religion, those are the posers. They act the part. They act like they got it all together. They act like they have no issues. They act like they are sinless instead of sinless. They give you the picture. But if you would turn the picture over and see what's on the inside, you'll come to the realization that they're not what they seem. But then you have those others that are deceived with false discoveries and elevation. In other words, you have individuals, family, that feel as though that as long as they can work, they, they, they serve in the church, they preach from the pulpits, they bow and pray on the front pew, they sing in the choir, they usher and greet at the doors. They do everything thinking that based on their works that they'll get into heaven, but their lives don't line up outside the church. God is saying for you and I tonight, don't depend on none of that. Because at the end of the day, my death my burial and my resurrection has made you righteous with the Father. And nothing you can do, nothing that you can say can earn you a key or a ticket to the kingdom. Only by his grace and his mercy can you get to the Father's house. So my challenge for you tonight is stop wearing, stop with the facade of who you think people want to see. Be who you are in Christ Jesus. And know this, that's a righteousness that God the Father desires to see. God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer. Father, we do thank you again for another blessed opportunity to come before you. And as always, we pray, Father, that something was said or done that helped on tonight. Now, Lord, have your way. Bless those, Father, that hear. Bless those that, did, that were not able to hear. I pray they come back at some point and hear what you, you've had to share. Now, Lord, we thank you. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen. Well, family. Thank you again so much for all that you've done and, and, and all that has, has transpired here at the New Hope Church. Listen, before I go, I want you to know the month of October, we're going to have a fantabulous time. We are going back to our normal Sunday school hour. Our normal Sunday school hour is from 8.30 to 9.30. And you know what happens at 9.30. We're going to have our fellowship once again. That's going to start. October the 2nd. I want to see you in the house. You already know. If you've never been to the New Hope Church, let me tell you. Not only do we have a great word of teaching uh, in our, during our Sunday school time, but we also have a great time of fellowship. Have a small breakfast. Have, have some eggs here every now and again. Have some grits and eggs. Grits and fish. Hello, somebody. A little orange juice, coffee. Come on, fellowship with us. Let's, let's, let's get back in the house, family, so that we can once again see what God really has in store for us. And that is not only the encouragement of the word, but that's encouragement of our fellow believers. That's encouragement in fellowship. And then at 10 o'clock, join us for our 10 a.m. worship. I'd love to have you in the house. It, but by chance, if you can't make it, don't worry. We will still be in the house uh, on Online, So we'll be online for our 8.30 Sunday school hour. We'll also be in online for our 10 o'clock worship experience. I hope to see you there. And also, yes, we're going to have a great time with great word from different 
uh, different pastors uh, on next week. I mean, on next month. Uh, so, so be on the lookout. There's going to be some surprises for you. Going to be going to be fantastic during the month of October. Thank you so much. Be blessed. Don't ever forget. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Good night.